All right, guys, we are back. Good evening, good morning, or good afternoon. As always, it is so great to see you. And friends, welcome to, well, welcome to an episode of What's in This Box? Well, I'll tell you guys, and this is, this is a, a video that's almost a year in the making. You see, one of the comic, a relatively common question that we see with campers and overlanders and people wanting to just get out there is, you know, when it's summertime, how do you keep cold? Wintertime, how do you keep warm? One of the common questions that we see with regards to when you look at different types or different ways that you can keep warm during the winter months, you have propane heaters like buddy heaters, you have electric heaters, which then you have to use with a generator or a buttload of batteries. Uh, you have different butane heaters, you have diesel heaters, you have propane heaters, I already said propane heaters. Um, and But with regards to diesel heaters, which is a very popular question that we see. A lot of you are intrigued when you go to Amazon, you type in diesel heaters and you are flooded with all sorts of cheap Chinese diesel heaters that are many cases under $200, some even under $150. I mean, I get it. Hey, it's intriguing. It's curious. It's, uh, hey, if it works, okay, awesome. Um, but if you look at every one of these, these diesel heaters, there's always a slew of negative reviews, and yet people still ask. People are still intrigued to the point where we were asked so many times with what did we think of these diesel heaters that last year, you may recall, we went up to Alabama Hills. We did a cold weather camping episode up there, and we t I went out and I bought one of these Cheap Chinese diesel heaters. It was 175 bucks, I want to say, off of Amazon. And the thing was an absolute turd. Not only when it came through, the, the parts were, nothing was properly labeled. The manual looked like it was written by a five-year-old Greek kid. I mean, you literally, not exaggeration, you could not read what was in the manual. Um, but we finally figured out how to get the thing working, and it worked half ass for the first night, although the thermostat wasn't working, and it was like 88 degrees inside the tent. That's pretty stinking warm, especially when it's like zero out outside. Uh, the second night is ultimately the thing died, uh, and that kind of sucked because, you know, 2 a.m. in the morning after messing around with diesel fuel and then throwing in the towel at that, uh, I ended up firing up the uh, ELP generator and using a electric heater. Uh, I had my six-year-old son with me, so I wanted to make sure I had something reliable and, you know, get the heat inside. And so inside this box is the solution to that. But before we get going with that, guys, I do have to ask you a big favor. You see, we put these videos together to help you make decisions, help you stay informed what's happening in the industry. In this particular case, this is one of those decisions that, hey, if we can help you save a few bucks, avoid making a bad buying decision, like for example, the Chinese diesel heater. I mean, from a budgetary standpoint, who wouldn't be interested? But if you're just buying something, it's gonna be more of a headache, it's not gonna be reliable, it's gonna be a you know something that is not safe to use, and then ultimately you're gonna end up throwing away, that's 175, 200 bucks out the window, and not to mention your time messing around with, your frustration dealing around with it, and your family's safety. So we're here to help you guys make better decisions. And if we were successful with that, do me a favor, where I'm leading with this here is, we're always trying to grow the channel, so if you can do me a favor, hit that like button down below, it really does help with the YouTube algorithm. That side of my friend, pull the seat in, let's go. All right, now with all that out of the way, as I mentioned a moment ago, this is a diesel heater inside of this, and this diesel heater is going to be installed on my Turtleback Expedition trailer. So this video series, this is gonna be a one to two, no, this will probably be a three part series. The first video is gonna be here in the studio. I'm gonna to talk to you, actually we're gonna unbox this sucker, and then I'm gonna to talk to you in the process about why I went with this and kind of the game plan with this diesel heater. Uh, part two of this series is going to be more of the actual install on the uh, Turtleback trailer. And episode three will be out in the field. So we'll get a, hey, does it work? Is it doing what it's supposed to? Um, and give you kind of a real world kind of, you know, play by play by play. So you have little bite-sized videos that you can watch and you can go back to. So if you are already made the decision to pick up one of these things and you want to watch the install video, you don't have to watch through all the, the beginning, you don't have to watch through all the, the ending stuff, you can just watch a video on how to install this. And so, with that said, now, 
let me share with you who this is from. So this is a two kilowatt uh, diesel heater from Planar Heaters in uh, Canada. Now you may be asking, why did I go with this company? Well, when you think about it, good quality diesel heaters. There's only a few companies on this planet that manufacture these things. Uh, and these guys are the closest proximity to where we are. We're in California. They're just north of us in Canada. Uh, and plus, these guys are one of the 900 pound gorillas who manufacture these sort of heaters. Uh, and after reviewing or carefully analyzing reviews and had numerous conversations with the owners of the company, I really felt good and felt my my interest in my family's interest when I say family interest so when I go out and go camping and my family is inside the tent this is what I was talking about the the inexpensive diesel heaters there are so many things from a safety standpoint that make these things not a good choice and so these people really put a lot of engineering and thought into these heaters itself so I'm really excited about this so let's crack this sucker open and see how did I do with a knife and see what this thing comes with. So, fragile with care and so box size. I don't know whether it makes any difference. 18, 18 by 10 by 14 and a half. So if you're a measurement person, boom, there you go. So the idea with this is I was on the phone with uh, one of the owners with Turtleback Trailers uh, a few weeks back and sharing with him what I wanted to do here. Because uh, at first I had a few ideas of where I was going to install this thing. At first I was thinking mounting it up underneath uh, the Toro off-road tent and drilling a hole through the bottom of the tent so I could have a floor duct or vent just in the floor duct, keep it nice and uh, clean and you know out of the way and all that other fun stuff. Because if you remember, the Turtleback uh, trailer, I have about a gap between, like this big, between the, the top of the trailer and then of course where the, the tent is. Now mind you, right now I have an eight foot table in there, but I switched tables. I'm, I moved to a more portable, more smaller uh, compact trailer, so I have that big cavity open to do what I wish. That was kind of plan A, but then they were sure with me that, and it reminded me also, because you may recall a few months ago, I went out to uh, Chandler, Arizona out to Turtleback and upgraded my AGM batteries, my dual AGM batteries that I had in there to a dual Brighter Products lithium battery. So now I have 200 amp hour uh, lithium batteries in there. And this got me thinking, those are mounted in the nose of the Turtleback trailer. Now, if you've done your homework on lithium batteries, lithium batteries have so many advantages, but one of the disadvantages with them is they don't behave. They don't like cold. So Speaking with the Turtleback folks, they shared with me that somebody actually mounted a diesel heater in the nose of their expedition trailer and they mounted a Rotopack, a diesel uh, Rotopack uh, container fuel cell on the outside of it. So that's probably going to be realistically the route that I'm going to go. I just want to find a way that I can route the tube going up to where I can plug it into the tent nice and clean. So. All right, so this is looking, this is looking pretty nicely packaged. So we have that big chunk of paper on the top there, and here we have, this looks like a three inch, I'm pretty sure that's a three inch pipe. That's a two and a half inch pipe, okay. Uh, that is nice, you know what's funny, on that uh, that diesel heater, that, that Chinese one from last year, they gave you like this much, it's like a foot long of the expandable pipe there. So I mean, what the hell are you gonna do with that? So this is, this is fantastic. This looks it looks like about four and a half feet. And I'm sure, I'm near certain this expands out to like 10 feet. So that's pretty awesome. Okay, so let's, damn, okay, so there's not a lot not a lot to this. This is really cool. Okay, so there's the rest of the box there. You have some paper that was holding that to the side. Okay, this is... Okay, this is a mounting plate. This is a stainless steel mounting plate for the Planner 2D. Okay, that is pretty awesome. All right, I can tell you right now the packaging of this 
is night and day compared to, again, that heater that I was telling you about from last year. Okay, so these things are made in Russia, so of course, it looks like the everything is in both Russian and English. And I have to say, as many of you know also uh, from this channel, one of the things that uh, we're going to be testing as well this 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 uh, this winter season is more uh, cold weather camping with the Russian bear tent and some other tents that you'll be hearing about here momentarily as well. Uh, and so that yeah, turns out another Russian company here. So uh, this is all the paperwork. I can tell you right now, the manual looks. The manual looks really, I'm pausing you for a moment just to make sure, you know, just kind of spot checking this. The manual looks really fantastic. It looks well written and actually I thought it was in both Russian and English, but it looks like the manual itself, at least this one is in English. I wonder if this one is, uh, yeah, everything's in English. Fantastic. Okay. The warranty card is both in Russian and English. We'll put that over there. Okay. All right, so let's pull everything out so we can see. Okay, so you can see, again, everything is so well packaged. And all these items were in this cavity right over here. Boom, there it is. Now, and I can tell you, first impression from a weight standpoint, that feels really good. Okay, so let's, all right, so let's take a look at the circuit. Oh, this is nice. So all the wiring harnesses are already done up nice for you, which is really nice to see. Um, and this thing is not all that big, uh, so which is really fantastic. The weight, here's the thing, with the, the last heater that I was sharing with you about, when you picked it up, I mean, it felt really cheap. I mean, you know, what did I expect, 175 bucks. Uh, this really feels really solid. I mean, this thing is really small as well. Uh, I mean, the main body of this thing is 12 and a half inches. About 475. And now right here, you have the pipes, you have your exhaust and inlet pipe there. So that's still, that's five and a half inches. So what I was thinking with this here is if I mount it in the nose of the, the Turtleback trailer, I would run the exhaust underneath the trailer and the air inlet right, I'd probably push it underneath as well. Keep it you know, where no air or where no water is gonna accidentally get in there. But here's the fun part with this. On the pipe, this is the reason why after thinking about this, it does make sense to put it in the nose of the trailer because I could put a little, a small little hole in the nose and that's going to allow, I don't know whether I'll even need to put a small hole into the, the, the pipe heading up or whether just what the heater creates will keep that nose warm enough to keep those lithium batteries happy. Um, but this feels really solid, guys. Now let's take a look at, okay, so here is our air duct, our air inlet rather. That's really nice, flexible unit. And so while covering the pipes, okay, you're given about, this looks about four feet of, yeah, about three and a half feet of exhaust pipe. And I saw a muffler here. Okay, so this looks, yeah, again, I can tell you, this is a lot, the, the Chinese diesel heater had a small muffler with it as well, but again, it felt really Tinish. This feels like full on steel. I mean, the, the brackets, everything, you can clearly see 
there's a big gap between $175 and something like this is going to run you about $1,000. And you can definitely see where your money's going. You're getting a lot of quality parts here. All right, so exhaust pipe, I'm going to put down there. Air inlet, I'm going to put down there. And as I understand, this is meant to go, like if you're putting in this in a, in a vehicle, this is going to go down into your existing tank. Uh, this, I'm guessing, is a is a heat proof pipe so things don't get burned now one of the things that's impressing me right off the get-go here guys is look at these wiring harnesses everything is already lined up for you this is really really fantastic um, I really like that because that takes the guesswork out of it and just makes life easier. And so obviously this thing will run on both diesel and kerosene. And the only thing they all you need to do is plug it up to a 12 volt source. And that's pretty awesome. And boom, everything is all lined up with you. I like the fact that all the electrical connections. Okay, so this must be our... I think this is our filter, right? So the fun thing, the fun thing with, uh, yeah, this is our, um, excuse me, this is our fuel pump. Uh, so the fun part with this, guys, is you, many of you might be pre handy in your garage. Uh, many of you might not be. Uh, I happen to be one of those people that are handy in the garage. So when you come along, this will, when you see how the install goes with me, this will give you a good indication whether or not this is something that you can do yourself. Now, the fun part and the other thing that I really like about this company as well is if you don't want to fuss with all this and you just want a ready to use, ready to plug in unit, they have uh, a couple, they have a two kilowatt and they have a four kilowatt briefcase units. And these things are ready to run. You just plug them in. Grab your hose, plug it into your tent, car, or your your uh, your your vehicle, and it's ready to go. Obviously, you have the fuel into it and the battery source. Uh, but this is going to be pretty awesome. So I'm really I'm pretty excited about. Oh, this is the control panel. Let's take a look at this. So this is going to be pretty interesting because this is the one of the parts that with that cheap Chinese one there it didn't have. So there was no way of. Uh, super cool. Okay, so obviously. This is a digital display that you can control right from within the tent. And again, all the electrical harnesses are already lined up for you. This is gonna be really cool. So obviously, until we have power to this, you're not gonna see squat. Uh, but I'm really excited about this because this will be able to control from inside the Toro Off-Road tent. Um, and actually, now I think about it, if I do mount this in the nose and I have the pipe, where it can be maneuvered pretty well. So when I do have the annex room out on the uh, on the tent, I can move the pipe from the annex room, I'm sorry, from the, the tent to the annex room, um, assuming I can, as many of you know, if you watched the last video from Arizona, the problem with my annex room is I have to figure out a way to seal off the top because it kind of flaps and so forth. But this is looking pretty cool, guys. Okay, so we're gonna, run, we're gonna end the video right there. Uh, and so, and that will lead us into part two. So where this picks up is going to be actually do the install itself. Down in my garage, we're gonna get in there and start hammering this out. Not really hammering out, but we're gonna start wrenching this thing in there and getting this thing lined up. All right, guys, that is it. Well, it's that time of the video where I'm gonna ask you to do all that YouTube stuff that is really, really helpful to the channel. So if you were mildly entertained with this video, if we were helpful, do me a favor, hit that like button down below. If you're currently not subscribed to the channel, hey, what are you waiting for? We'd love to have you part of this channel. And last but not least, might as well hit that bell so therefore you're notified each time that we come out with a video like this. That said, my friends, I'm gonna clean up this mess, get out of my studio so you get out there, stay healthy, and find your adventure.